tutorial i will be sharing about two sub classes of deep chem the keras model and torch model which will prove to be very useful in converting a tensor flow model or a pi torch model into deep chem model in the tutorials which we have seen so far we have used the standard models provided by deep chem this is fine for many applications but sometime it you might be required to create an entirely new model which you will be defining on your own deep chem provides integration with both tensor flow and pi torch so that you can use models with the other frameworks with deep chem's api to run deep chem in colab we have to run these two commands pip install deep chem and pip install rdk so that we have deep chem and rdk installed in colab and let's import deep chem so we will be using deep chem 2.6 development and version in this tutorial there are two different approaches which you can take to use tensor flow or pi torch model with deep chem it depends on whether you want to use tensor flow or pi torch api or deep chem api for training and evaluating your model for using tensor flow and pi torch api for training and evaluating your model deep chem's dataset as class has make tf dataset method and make pi torch dataset method this method takes in converts a deep chem dataset object into a tensor flow dataset object or a torch data iterable dataset object so that it help so that it can be iterated over, over the, the the data respectively they can be used for easily adapting deep chem's data set to use with other frameworks using this method you can have your deep chem data set and use deep chem's futurizers like futurizers splitters loaders and convert the data set into a tensor flow or pi torch data set and use it with your existing tensor flow or pi torch code the other approach is to wrap your tensor flow or pi torch model in a deep chem model object this will let you use a many other useful features provided by deep chem like logging progress to tensor board or weights and bias etc here we will be seeing about how to convert the models from other frameworks tensor flow and pi torch into a deep chem model object to convert the tensor flow model into a deep chem model we will be using the keras model provided by deep chem's model class the keras model acts as a wrapper around the tensor flow keras model let's see an example of how it works the first thing is we create an model in tensor flow we create a and we are defining a very simple model with the first layer containing a thousand units and an activation of relu and the next is a dropout 50 percent dropout to provide regularization and a we have a final layer that produces a scalar output now to convert this into a deep chem model we call deep chem keras model api and if at this part we should also define the loss function which we will be using so for this more task i we will be using the l2 loss function and by calling by passing the keras model and the loss function we can create a deep chem model and let's load the delany solubility dataset and see how we can use this dataset the model so we are loading the delany dataset with is extended connectivity fingerprint futurizers and we are using a random split on the data set the delany data set is a collection of molecules which are represented as smile string in raw form but once futurized the molecules get become represented as an array of size 1024 and the data set has got 902 samples and the data and the data set contains like for each molecule it measures the log solubility in more 
moles per liter per mole molecule. And now we can use our model, deep chem model, to train the data set. And we have a pretty good training score and test score based on the R square evaluation metric. The next thing is the torch model subclass, which works just like Keras model, except that it grabs a torch module. Let's use a PyTorch model to create another model just like the previous one and we will train it on the same data. We create a PyTorch model with the same architecture as in the previous case and we call DeepChem's Torch model API with the PyTorch model as an input argument and the another argument as the loss function. Now we will have a we will have a DeepChem model and we are fitting that model on a on the train data set and we are training the data set. Mm, we are using the evaluation metric as in the previous case, R square score, and we should get the same approximately same result because we are having the same model architecture and we are also training for the same number of epochs. And we can see that we have a training score and test score are almost as close to the previous case. Now let's see a little more advanced example. In the above models, the loss was computed directly from the model's output. Often that is fine, but not always. Say, consider a classification model that outputs a probability distribution. While it is possible to compute the loss from the probabilities, it is more numerically stable to compute it from logits. To do this, we create a model that return multiple outputs, both probabilities and logits. Keras model and torch model let you specify a list of output types and if a particular output type has type prediction, then it means that it will re return a normal output and when you call predict of and if it has type loss, then it means that it should be passed to the loss function and in place of normal output and in that case it will return the logits. So the sequential models do not allow multiple outputs so instead we use a subclassing style model. The class classification model subclasses the tensorflow Keras model and we are defining our base model using tensorflow. We have an, the first hidden layer of 1000 units followed by a single the final layer which produces a scalar output and we are having a creating our Keras model and then we are converting the Keras model into a DeepChem model object. So again we are passing in the Keras model, tensor the Keras model as an input argument, then we are passing in the loss function and then the output types which can be either prediction or loss. Now we will train our model on the base dataset. The base dataset provides provides results on uh, provides the binding results of a set of inhibitors for the base one enzyme. So, uh, base one enzyme is the enzyme which causes Alzheimer's disease. If a drug is able to inhibit the base one enzyme, then that drug is a potential treatment to Alzheimer's disease. So, the base one dataset contains the base or classification dataset contains a set of potential drugs that is molecules represented as raw smile strings and whether that molecule inhibits base one enzyme or not. We will be the raw dataset contains it as a smile string. And for our training purposes, we will futurize the smile string with the extended connectivity fingerprint futurizer and load the data set. Now we are fitting our model for a very small number of epochs, 10 epochs, and then we are training it. The metric for measure is the ROCIUC score, and we have a pretty good training score and the test.
So this sums uh, most of most about the Keras model and Torch model. But these two has got a lot of other features and here are some of the most important ones. The, what is when things can automatically save checkpoints during training and it can log progress to the console, to tensor board or to weights and biases and you can define your own custom loss functions of the form output as a function of output, labels and weights. It, allows for yearly stopping using validation class and much more like you can predict the uncertainty in model outputs and so on so by when you are wrapping your tensorflow or pytorch model with the keras model or torch model api you get an immediate access to all these features you can see the documentation for more details on them as a next step you can probably create your model of your choice in TensorFlow or PyTorch and convert it into a DeepChem model and play using one of the DeepChem's data set. If you are excited about DeepChem and want to get more involved, there are some things which you can do right now. You can start DeepChem on GitHub. This will help us build a more awareness of the project. We have a DeepChem GitHub channel which hosts a number of scientists, developers and enthusiasts who are using DeepChem. You are, in case you have any questions, you can jump in and just drop your questions or any points that you want to share. You can also introduce yourself in the forum or raise topics over there. Thank you.